Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to Friday Fact Day, where I get to talk about my work in fitness, feminism, and philosophy. And today's fact is... More of a technical one today, I want to talk about neck safety in exercise. Now, you've probably all heard the whole thing about, you know, when, when you're doing, say, a neck stretch to the side, you don't pull on your head or your neck. Same thing when you're doing abs on the floor, you don't want to pull your neck. That's all very good advice and absolutely 100% true. But I want to go a little bit deeper on a number of things. First thing is that when I talk about neck safety and exercises, it's really not just the neck, although that's probably the most vitally important one to keep safe. There's a few other things going on that you kind of want to be aware of. And really, ultimately, doing well with any fitness activity is about how aware you are of how your body's working. So the first thing is that in, in addition to the neck, you also want to be aware of how things are feeling in the shoulder, particularly back here in the the Vader scapula area, which is where the neck and the shoulder connect. And it, it does what it says on the tin. It levates the scapula. It lifts it up and down. So if you're in a situation where your shoulders are hunched up a bit, either because of stress or because of certain habits, like perhaps you, you do that on one side because you hold your phone against your ear with your shoulder. Don't be doing that. All of that's going to get a little tightened up and you're going to definitely want to stretch it, but you don't want to go too hard. And one of the things to notice is, is there any discomfort in behind the ear or down along the jaw, in the jaw joint up here and down along it? And you'll feel all of this area connected when you get a really good stretch going, but you don't want to go so far that that causes pain. Really, the number one rule with any stretch is that it shouldn't be painful. It can be challenging and that's a good thing, but not pain. Pain's going way too far. Other thing to consider is neck alignment. And this is particularly important when we're doing ab work on the floor. So whether you're doing crunches or the old fashioned sit-ups, which I'm not a fan of, I should really probably do another video on that some other day in the gym. Here's the thing with alignment. Years ago, we noticed that it was quite common for people doing sit-ups to really be doing more of a head bob than an ab crunch in the, in the entire torso working. So, Different things have been tried over the years, not using your hands behind your head, using them, different machines and little gadgets and things like that. Really, it all comes down to you being aware of what you're doing. Most of this can be fixed by where your gaze is going. And if you've done any yoga and worked on balancing poses, you know where your gaze is going is like 90% of the success. Back in the 80s, when a lot of us started learning this stuff for the first time, the protocol at the time was if you were uh, doing ab work on the floor, that you, as you were leaning back, you were to look up at the ceiling and do your ab work from there. Not a great position. And then the rule, the rule, because <laughs> rules are pretty vague in fitness, the rule became to look at that spot where the wall and the ceiling meet. And so we went from here to more here. So now, in order to get a good neck alignment, when your knees are bent and you're on the floor doing ab work, we actually want you looking at the thighs. And there's a lot of us use the phrase eyes to the thighs. So if you're ever stuck for how to remember this, just remember that little rhyme, eyes to the thighs. It will take you into a pretty good alignment most of the time. Now, how do you know if you're in a good alignment? Couple of things. One, again, you won't be in pain. It should be challenging to do the ab work, but not painful on the head, the neck, the jaw, behind the ear, back of the shoulder. The other thing is either use your mirrors. And I know a lot of people don't like looking at mirrors, especially when they work out. It feels weird. It feels narcissistic. Listen. The mirrors are there as a tool, just like any other tool, just like picking up a dumbbell or a resistance band or any other tool you could possibly use. The, the mirrors are just another tool in the toolkit. So go ahead and use them. Have a little look over to the side at the mirror, see if your alignment looks good. The other thing is, of course, to go to somebody who's a qualified fitness instructor and do, as I've said in many videos, do check and make sure that the person you are talking to actually has a fitness credential because there's no law stipulating we have to have them. So check and make sure you get somebody who's actually certified and registered in whatever jurisdiction you're in. They can have a look at you from the side while you're doing ab work or while you're doing a yoga stretch or whatever the case may be and have a little assessment there. It's really worth your time because if you get too sore in this area, you're going to really want to avoid doing those exercises or stretches and you may even get turned off of them completely. The head can weigh somewhere between 12 to 14 pounds, depending on 
the size of your skeletal structure. So it's a lot of weight. So if that's not controlled for, if we don't tuck the chin uh, in and, and protect the neck from the weight of the head, things can get uncomfortable and can get overstretched or you can uh, pull a muscle or pull a tendon. So just be careful with that stuff. Everything that we do with our bodies is run through the spinal column. It comes from the brain down to the spinal column out through the nerve system. And we want to be really careful that anything we do, any stretches, anything where we're doing stuff that the head needs support for, all of that needs to be done carefully. And if you are starting to feel any tingling or numb, numbness, especially in your arms and your fingers, that might be a sign that maybe you have a pinched nerve or something in there is kind of damaged. And you, you definitely want to get medical attention for that. So there you have it, folks, a little bit more of a technical one. And uh, I don't really do a whole lot of safety talks on this channel, but I can. So if that's something that you feel you need more information on, uh, give me a shout in the in the comment box below and let me know uh, if, if you've got questions on specifics or if you just want more of this sort of thing in general. And of course, don't forget to support me by subscribing to the channel, sharing this video with friends, liking, commenting, doing all that youtube -y stuff. And as always, Lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you in the next one.